Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 22 of my linear algebra tutorial series. Today's video is going to be all about orthogonal complements. So what do we mean by orthogonal? Well, orthogonal refers to a relationship that is at right angles. So if we have a subspace A, then A perpendicular, that's this guy right there, upside down T, is going to represent all vectors orthogonal to vectors in A. So let's say we have a vector here, and let's say this vector is vector A. Well, the orthogonal complement of vector A is just going to be a line that lies perpendicular to it, which would be represented like this. And if we have a vector set V, and every vector in vector set X is orthogonal to V, they'll, then in that situation, X would be the same as V perpendicular, meaning that X and V are orthogonal complements of each other. Now, the orthogonal complement of the vector B in this R3 space is going to be a perpendicular plane B perpendicular. And if we know that A dotted A perpendicular is equal to zero, we know that they are perpendicular or that they are orthogonal, however you wish to say it. And on top of that, if vector sets are orthogonal complements, then the dot products of vectors from both will all equal zero. So let's look at an example here. Let's say we have V, which is a span of four, negative two, and one, as well as five, six, and four. So this is a two-dimensional plane in R3. Well then, V perpendicular is going to be represented as all vectors in R3 where x dotted with 4 minus 2, 1 being equal to 0 and x dotted 5, 6, 4 will be equal to 0. And we can come in here and represent x here as x1, x2, and x3, which if we go and get these values, this becomes 4x1 minus 2x2 plus x3 is equal to 0, and 5x1 plus 6x2 plus 4x3 is equal to 0. Well, we can put this into a matrix, so let's make this 4, negative 2, 1, 5, 6, 4, and O's. And if we go and find the reduced row echelon form of this, we would end up with 1, 0. And if you want me to show you how to work these reduced row echelon calculations out, which I have covered many times in previous videos, just tell me in the comments and I will do it. I just had a lot of people say stop doing it, and that's the only reason I've stopped. All right, so after we get it into reduced row echelon form, we can pull back out into a system of equations. So we're gonna get x1 plus seven over 17 x3 equal to zero, and x2 plus 11 over 34 x3 is equal to zero. And if I solve for the pivot variables in this situation, I'll end up having x1 is equal to negative 7 over 17x3 and x2 equal to negative 11 over 34x3. So here we would have x1, x2, x3, get myself a little bit more space here, is equal to x3 negative 7 over 17, negative 11 over 34, and 1. 
and the orthogonal complement is going to be given by this column vector, which means that V perpendicular is equal to the span of this guy right here. Just move it inside of there. And so this is a line that is orthogonal to the plane V inside of R3 space. And just so you know, two planes cannot be orthogonal because they must both contain the vector where they both meet. So that's important to know. So it makes sense that pre our previous answer was a vector and not a plane. Now there are certain rules you should know. First, the row as well as the null space of a matrix are going to be orthogonal complements of each other. So to place this in other words, we would say N a is equal to C, a transpose perpendicular, as well the row space is going to be equal to the null space perpendicular, as well the column as well as the left null space are also going to be orthog orthogonal complements. So that translates to the column space would be equal to the left null space perpendicular or the left null space would be equal to the column space perpendicular. Now just to remind you, whenever we refer to dimensions, we are referring to the number of vectors that are needed to form a basis for a subspace. And if we would use that knowledge, we would say that the dimensions of V plus the dimensions of V perpendicular are going to be equal to N for Rn. And let's use an example here. Let's say that we have a matrix A and it's 4, 1, 3, 4, minus 2, 5 negative 2, 3, negative 3, 12, 8, and 9. Well, the reduced row echelon version of this is going to be equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 2, 3, 4. And if we know this, we're going to be able to find out some other different things, such as the column space is going to have three dimensions. Also, we're going to know that the row space is going to have three dimensions, just like the column space. The null space is going to have one dimension. And the left null space is going to have zero dimensions. So how exactly the column space, I'm sure you can tell, is going to have three dimensions, as we can see right here. All right, but you may not understand why exactly the null space would have one dimension. Well, if we have A and it is an M by N matrix, and as you can see here, N is equal to four, well, the dimensions for the null space are going to be n minus whatever the column space dimensions are. And that's how we get 1. And then we get the left null space dimensions by taking m minus the column space dimensions and m, which is going to be equal to 3, minus 3, and that's how we get 0. All right, well, I'm going to show you exactly why this is important to know. Because knowing all of this information, we're going to be able to map out the structure of the subspaces with literally almost no information aside from just looking at the matrix that is presented before us. Knowing this, we now know that the column space is going to be mapped out to a span that is going to contain three vectors because this guy over here is going to be part, uh, or is going to be R3. This is going to be R4. Where do those come from? This is going to be three. This is going to be four. Okay. Three, four, okay? Likewise, 
This null is going to be R4, and this left null space is going to be R3. Let's just underline these so I can refer to them. All right, so we have our span. We know it's going to be three vectors, and we know that each one is going to have three components inside of it. What do we know about the row space? Well, the row space is going to be a span. It's also going to have three vectors. So draw in our three vectors we have inside of here. And how many components is it going to have? Four. So we can go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's do the next thing for the null space. So the null space is going to be a span. How many vectors is it going to have? One. So there's your one vector. And how many components is it going to have? Four. Because of that right there. And then finally, we end up with our left null space, which is just going to be a zero vector, which is one vector. And it's only to contain all zero values, as we can see right there. So there you go. A whole ton of examples of what we mean whenever we talk about orthogonal complements. Hopefully you found that useful. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.